Sarah rolled into one of the supermarkets near her home. As she navigated through the shelves, the supermarket manager looked at her with disdain, assuming she wouldn't be able to reach certain products. Can I help you? He asked her impatiently. Sarah felt the lack of respect in his look and tone. However, she knew that once she revealed her identity, he would regret it for the rest of his life. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Sarah hadn't anticipated reacting so fiercely to the manager's behavior, but it almost seemed like he was the only one bothered by her disability in the store. She found it unacceptable. With her determination, she knew she had to teach that manager a lesson, even if he didn't know who she was. Who was Sarah? Why did she have so much influence? And most importantly, how could he possibly make amends and get his cherished job back? Richard had always loved working as a manager at the local supermarket. It made him feel important, and he enjoyed the leadership qualities it brought out in him. However, Richard was often blind to his own faults, ignoring reviews about him online or on the message board. Sarah was one of the people that Richard would wrongfully call a Karen, as he often misused the term. She was new in town, and Richard didn't recognize his new customer. However, what he did recognize was the wheelchair she was riding in. He sighed, figuring she would be troublesome, distracting his employees from their work with her need for help. Sarah herself had just been casually rolling around her wheelchair through the store. So far, she had been casually browsing, trying to find what she was looking for. She had been going through aisle by aisle until she found a man following her. The man in uniform looked her up and down. Sarah didn't miss the certain feeling of disdain in the way he looked at her. Miss, can I help you with anything? He asked, and she almost saw him roll his eyes at her. She was astounded by this. Never had anyone behaved in such a manner toward her. No, so far I'm fine. I don't need any help yet, Sarah said politely while she was trying to gauge what this man's deal was. Richard gave Sarah a teeth-filled fake smile. Might I request you buy a reacher grabber beforehand? He said, showing her something resembling a hand trash claw. This dumbfounded Sarah. Aren't store employees supposed to help people find or grab certain items? She asked, voicing her thoughts. Of course, but someone with your... He paused, thinking of an acceptable word. Condition might need extra help. We simply do not have the time to be someone's private shopper. Richard had no idea in what way he would regret his words. Sarah's skin turned red with anger. Sir, what is your name? She asked, venom in her words. Richard hardly seemed to notice or was unbothered by it. My name is Richard Williams. I am the manager of this fine store, he boasted with a touch of vanity. Sarah exhaled deeply, her patience tested by Richard's insensitivity. Thank you for the suggestion, Mr. Williams, she replied, maintaining a calm tone. She maneuvered her wheelchair, ready to move to the next aisle. It would have been easy to turn her wheelchair around and leave to boycott the store after such an incident. Yet she knew she had every right to shop without being harassed. The supermarket's atmosphere was palpable with unease. Several employees who had witnessed Richard's behavior towards Sarah exchanged glances, their eyes speaking volumes. The usually mundane atmosphere of the store was now charged with tension. In the break room, employees gathered, some stealing quick moments away from their stations. They huddled in small groups discussing the recent events. Amidst the commotion, Jenny, an employee who had worked at the store for over a decade, made her way through the aisles. Recognized by many for her warm and compassionate nature, she approached Sarah with determination, her heels clicking with every step. Sarah, she began choosing her words with care. I couldn't just stand by after what I witnessed. Firstly, I am truly sorry for how Richard treated you, Jenny said, her voice filled with genuine concern. His behavior was uncalled for and doesn't represent how most of us here feel or think. She paused, searching Sarah's eyes. Jenny took a deep breath before diving into the deeper issues at hand. Sarah, it's not just about today. There has been growing concern among many employees about Richard's leadership. She hesitated, looking around to ensure no one was eavesdropping. We feel cornered, sometimes even bullied. She sighed heavily, the weight of her confession evident. He's created an atmosphere where people are often walking on eggshells, scared to make a mistake. Sarah's heart swelled with a mix of emotions. On one hand, she was deeply saddened by what the employees were enduring. On the other, she felt immense gratitude for Jenny's bravery. Taking Jenny's hand, she said, Thank you for sharing this with me. Having thanked Jenny for her bravery and openness, Sarah decided it was time for another kind of intervention. She unlocked her phone, quickly finding the contact she was looking for. With a deep breath, she pressed call and waited for the person on the other end to answer. Hello. 
A familiar voice answered with anticipation. Taking another steadying breath, Sarah began, I've had a rather disturbing experience at the store today. She proceeded to share the details of her encounter with Richard, trying to remain as objective as possible, but her emotions occasionally seeped through. The voice on the other end grew heavy with concern as Sarah narrated the incident. Sarah, I'm so sorry you had to go through that, the person replied. I appreciate your concern, Sarah replied, her voice gentle but firm. But this isn't about me. It's about the employees who deal with this on a regular basis. Everyone deserves respect and decency. Sarah nodded, even though the person couldn't see her, feeling a bit lighter. Thank you, she whispered, ending the call with the hope that the store's environment would soon change for the better. As she continued her shopping, employees of the store, having witnessed or heard about the incident, approached her, from the deli clerk offering her freshly sliced meat to a stock boy inquiring if she needed help reaching a high shelf. The outpour of support was palpable. From the corner of the store behind a tall promotional display, Richard's eyes followed Sarah. He noticed every employee who approached her, every whispered conversation, every nod of respect in her direction. Richard decided he had to take control. Abandoning his vantage point, he discreetly followed Sarah, hiding behind aisles, peeking around corners. The gentle chime of the supermarket door heralded the arrival of a distinguished-looking gentleman wearing a sharp suit and carrying an air of authority. He walked with purpose, his eyes scanning the environment. Catching sight of the man headed his way, Richard straightened up and walked confidently towards the visitor. Good day, sir. Richard Williams at your service, the manager of this establishment, he boasted with a touch of vanity. The gleam of arrogance in Richard's eyes was evident, thinking the gentleman was perhaps a wealthy customer or a potential business partner. The gentleman's face remained stoic, seemingly impervious to Richard's presumptuous welcome. Thank you, Mr. Williams, he said evenly, extending a hand. I'm here on an important matter. As the conversation between Richard and the gentleman continued, a small crowd started to gather at a discreet distance. Employees whispered among themselves, speculating about the visitor's identity and intentions. The air was thick with anticipation. As Mr. Harrison cleared his throat, he began, I am James Harrison, pausing for effect, the owner of this and all the other branches of the supermarket chain. Richard's smug expression faded rapidly, replaced by one of sheer disbelief. With a stern expression, Mr. Harrison continued, I've been receiving numerous complaints regarding the store's management, particularly about the behavior towards staff and customers. Richard's heart sank further with each word. It's paramount to me. Harrison asserted that every visitor and employee feels respected and valued in any of our establishments. With a steely gaze, Harrison addressed Richard directly. I've been informed of a rather unsettling incident involving Mrs. Sarah earlier today. Would you care to shed some light on the matter? Harrison's tone was firm, demanding an explanation. Richard felt trapped, the weight of the entire store's gaze bearing down on him. He had no option but to recount the distasteful events. Well, you see, sir, I thought she was... Richard began, stumbling over his words, his voice quivering, making his attempts at justifying his behavior sound even more hollow. I believe she was misbehaving and trying to take advantage of the store's policies. Richard's voice trailed off, realizing how feeble his explanation sounded when said out loud. Mr. Harrison took a deep breath, his eyes softening momentarily. Let me tell you about Sarah, he began. A few years ago, she had a devastating accident that left her with significant challenges. Yet she persevered, pushing through painful rehabilitations to be where she is today. He looked at Sarah, admiration evident in his eyes. She is a testament to resilience and grace. Harrison took a moment, his gaze unwavering. Given the circumstances and the behavior displayed, he continued, I've made the decision to relieve Richard of his managerial duties, effective immediately. A murmur went through the crowd. Richard's face turned pale as the reality of his actions fully dawned on him. The supermarket was more than just a business. It was a community. Let this serve as a reminder, Harrison continued, his voice strong and resonating, that this establishment stands for compassion, respect, and quality service. He emphasized, a title or position does not give one the right to belittle or mistreat others. Let's be the change we want to see and set an example for others to follow. The staff clapped in agreement, inspired by Sarah's graciousness and Harrison's leadership. With Richard's exit, the supermarket stood at the cusp of a transformation. With renewed vigor, the employees worked towards making the store a beacon of inclusivity and kindness. 
Sarah's experience had not only changed the course of one manager's career, but had ushered in a new era for the entire establishment. The store wasn't just a place to buy groceries. It was a community that cared.